Good evening. We're going to go ahead and continue the book we've been reading, The One and Only Ivan. I'm reading this book with permission from Harper Collins Book Publishing, and the author is Catherine Applegate. I think I've always been an artist, even as a baby, still clinging to my mother. I had an artist's eye. I saw shapes in the clouds and sculptures and the tumbled stones at the bottom of the stream. I grabbed at colors, the crimson flower just out of my reach, the ebony bird streaking past. I don't remember much about my early life, but what I do remember is this. Whenever I got a chance, I would dip my fingers into cool mud and use my mother's back as my canvas. She was a patient soul, my mother. Someday, I hope I can draw the way Julia draws, imagining worlds that don't yet exist. I know what most humans think. They think gorillas don't have imaginations. They think we don't remember our pasts or ponder our futures. Come to think of it, I suppose they have a point. Mostly, I think about what is, not what could be. I've learned not to get my hopes up. When the Big Top Mall was first built, it smelled of new paint and fresh hay, and humans came to visit from morning till night. They drifted past my domain like logs on a lazy river. Lately, a day might go by without a single visitor. Max says he's worried. He says I'm not cute anymore. He says, Ivan, old boy, you've lost your magic. You used to be a hit. It's true that some of my visitors don't linger the way they used to. They stare through the class, they cluck their tongues, they frown while I watch my TV. He looks lonely, they say. Not long ago, a little boy stood before my glass, steer, tears streaming down his smooth red cheeks. He must be the loneliest gorilla in the world, he cried, clutching his mother's hand. At times like that, I wish humans could understand me the way I can understand them. It's not so bad, I wanted to tell the little boy. With enough time, you can get used to almost anything. My visitors are often surprised when they see the TV put Mac put in my domain. They seem to find it odd, the sight of a gorilla staring at a tiny box with humans. Sometimes I wonder, though, isn't the way they stare at me sitting in my tiny box just as strange? My TV is old. It doesn't always work, and sometimes days will go by before anyone remembers to turn it on. I'll watch anything, but I'm particularly fond of cartoons with their bright jungle colors. I especially enjoy it when someone slips on a banana peel. Bob, my dog friend, he loves TV almost as much as I do, but he prefers to watch professional bowling and cat or dog food commercials. Bob and I have seen many romance movies, too. In romance, there is much hugging and sometimes face-licking. I have yet to see a single romance starring a gorilla. We also enjoyed old Western movies. In a Western, someone always says, This town ain't big enough for the both of us, Sheriff. In a Western, you can always tell who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. And the good guys always win. Bob says westerns are nothing like real life. I have been in my domain for 9,855 days alone. For a while, when I was young and foolish, I thought I was the last gorilla on earth. I tried not to dwell on it. Still, it's hard to stay upbeat when you think there are no more of you. Then, one night, after I watched a movie about men in black hats with guns and feeble-minded horses, a different show came on. It was not a cartoon, not a romance, not a western. I saw a lush forest. I heard birds murmuring, grass moved, trees rustled, and I saw him. He was a bit threadbare and scrawny and not as good-looking as I am, to be honest. But sure enough, he was a gorilla. As suddenly as he had appeared, the gorilla vanished, and in his place was a scruffy white animal I learned called a polar bear, and then a chubby water creature called a manatee, and then another animal, and another, and another. 
All night, I sat wondering about the gorilla I glimpsed. Where did he live? Would he ever come to visit? If there was a he somewhere, could there be a she as well? Or was it just the two of us in the world, trapped in our own separate boxes? Stella says she's sure I will see another real live gorilla someday. And I believe her because she is older than I am and has eyes like black stars and knows more than I will ever know. Stella is a mountain. Next to her, I look like a rock. And Bob is a grain of sand. Every night when the stores close and the moon washes the world with milky light, Stella and I talk. We don't have much in common, but we have enough. We are huge and alone, and we both love yogurt-covered raisins. Sometimes Stella tells stories of her childhood, of leafy canopies hidden by mist and the busy songs of flowing water. Unlike me, she remembers every detail of her past. Stella loves the moon with its untroubled smile. I love the feel of the sun on my belly. She says, it is quite a belly, my friend, and I say thank you. So is yours. We talk, but not too much. Elephants, like gorillas, do not waste words. Stella used to perform in a large and famous circus, and she still does some of those tricks for our show. During one stunt, Stella stands on her hind legs while Snickers jumps on her head. It's hard to stand on your hind legs when you weigh more than 40 men. If you are a circus elephant and you stand on your hind legs while a dog jumps on your head and you get a treat, and if you do not, the claw stick comes swinging. Elephant hide is as thick as bark on an ancient tree, but a claw stick can pierce it like a leaf. Once Stella saw a trainer hit a bull elephant with a claw stick, a bull elephant is like a silverback, noble, contained calm like a cobra. But when the claw stick caught the bull's flesh, he tossed the trainer in the air with his tusk. The man flew, Stella said, like a big ugly bird. She never saw the bull elephant again. And that's where we'll stop today. I hope you're enjoying the story and come back tomorrow to hear some more.